everyone, and welcome to a special episode of JSA TV with Stream Data Centers, where we today are, will explore how to deliver a great data center experience at the intersection of valuable partnership and mission critical service. I'm Barb Mitchell of JSA, and joining me today are Chad Rodriguez, Vice President, Network and Cloud, and Katie O'Hara, Vice President, Business Development. It's so great to see you guys again. It's, it's um, been a few months, and so we're so happy to have you back uh, chatting. Um, I know that you're heading to ITW in, in Washington, D.C. Ne next month, end of August. Uh, and so we'd really love to chat with you today um, and hear your thoughts on, again, as I said, the intersection of the data center space, Fortune 500 enterprise, hyperscale giants, uh, et cetera. So thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Barb. Thanks, Barb. So as I mentioned, you're heading to ITW. It's, I'm sure, going to feel great to be back there. You're heading in person off to Washington, D.C. What are you hoping for? What are you expecting? Tell us what you think. Well, I'll jump in, um, Katie, if you don't mind. Um, but um, just excited to get back out there again. It's, you know, just eager to, you know, be in the environment with uh, our peers, colleagues, uh, you know, customers, and just shaking hands, uh, smiling, and sharing stories um, on what we've all been doing over the past year and a half. And, uh, you know, kind of sharing some lessons learned and and uh, talking a little bit of business. I agree with you, Chad. Um, I'm excited to go out and just see everyone face to face, and then uh, also even catch the ball game that we're going to be going to. <laughs> yeah, fun, fun. That would be a highlight for sure. Uh, and so, you know, so great to finally see things starting to go back to normal. But you know, this year hasn't slowed you guys down at all. I think you've been super busy. I, I think you've had some big projects happening in you know, Phoenix and Chicago, for example. Can you tell us more about this, you know, sort of what's been happening and um, what this means for Stream and for your customers? Yeah. Uh, so Barb, we have now started on our second development in Chicago. We have uh, over 200,000 square foot facility in Elk Grove. And uh, the building is going to be capable of uh, reaching 32 megawatts. Um, so we're excited to start on that second development there. Uh, as you also know, we have our facility in Phoenix in Goodyear. Uh, it's 157 acres with our first building at over 400,000 square feet. Um, we're going to be building about four more buildings after that. And uh, that also can reach up to 200 megawatts plus on that site. So very large developments that are happening and we've been really busy over here. So yeah, significant for sure. Yeah, well said, Katie. It's uh, like Katie mentioned, our second facility in, in Elk Grove, Chicago, um, you know, within 12 month time frame, we're, you know, finishing construction and cutting the ribbon in one facility and, and starting construction in our second facility. And, you know, from a connectivity perspective, real excited about our, our Shy 2 location. Um, from a day one perspective, it's going to be our, our highest uh, connected facility uh, in our in our existing portfolio. And then, you know, uh, flying out to the Phoenix area, like Katie mentioned, it's, you know, five, 40 megawatt data centers uh, from a planned campus perspective, solving for that, having connectivity to each of those facilities and working with new carriers relations and bringing in networks uh, in, into that location. Um, and then sharing the vision as far as, you know, it's just not a facility, not a standalone facility, but it's a campus and, and biggest in the region and, and nearby region. So we're, we're real excited, um, you know, to be offering and sharing that over you know, 2 million square foot of uh, data hall plan space. Yeah, so impressive. Yeah, it's always exciting to see everything. You just keep on moving forward, you guys. So it's exciting to hear all these updates always. Um, we're going to move on now to this, what we call our rapid fire uh, portion of our, our talk today. So how this works is I'm going to ask a question and you can respond. I'll throw it to, to one of you. And if the other wants to, to chime in, that's great, but I'll throw it to one of you. 30 seconds to respond. It's like a game show <laughs> here, but so I'm just going to ask you the first question. This one's going to go to you, Chad. Uh, so what are some of the biggest mistakes Fortune 500 and hyperscale organizations make when looking for a data center provider? Well, if I answered that as a mistake, I 
probably wouldn't be putting ourselves in good position. Uh, no, we we all um, you know are have ownership in in uh, you know building the industry and, and for stream data centers, it's providing you know co-location space. Eighty percent of over eighty percent of our customer base right now is Fortune five hundred. Um, we've developed a very strong niche and, and built some of our newer facilities with hyperscale space to complement some of the other, you know, build the suit or powered shells. Um, we like to stay flexible as far as what our service offering is. And, and honestly, um, you know, it, it's, we learn from each other. So it's not, you know, a mistake necessarily on one particular party, one, one uh, you know, a Fortune 500 entity or hyperscale entity or the coal provider but collectively learning from each other and in, in how do we improve because everything is, is changes so rapidly. Um, and so to be able to keep pace with that and keep an ear on what the latest requirements are, I mean, that's, that's part, part of the ownership that we have to take. Okay. All right. Next question over to you, Katie. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So how do you ensure that you're acting as the best partner to your customers? Uh, well, whenever our customers come up with a roadblock or, you know, something that we can just solve, um, we have such a large tenure on our team of um, high level executives that I like to call upon the different expertises that we have internally to help them with their issues. Um, you know, whether it's the network team or engineering team looking to solve on floor plans, um, you know, timing uh, on the construction side. Uh, we really can pull in and, and help them get their job, help them with their job. So um, love having our team and, and uh, in that to help our clients. Okay, Chad, this one's for you. Uh, okay, so what does Stream do differently from other providers specifically around network and cloud? Oh, that's an easy one. Thanks for sticking it <laughs> up, Barb. Um, <laughs> No, we, we like to keep it simple. We take pride in that. Um, and we, we you know, that, that's part of the culture and who we are, uh, not just from a connectivity perspective, but also our, our business practice. Um, and so, it, again, that extends into our ecosystem. And so what we try to do is we, we try to stay out of the way and just create the most conducive environment uh, for our, our, our customers and even, you know, we look at the connectivity providers as our customers as well. And so, you know, we'll help from a consultative perspective to be able to solve whatever the network requirements are, whether it's pulling in, you know, high fiber counts or high speed services or traditional connectivity requirements. And then on top of that, um, you know, we don't always look, we, we don't look to monetize, um, you know, charging carriers to pull in and, and use our, our conduit systems. Um, we allow for carriers to pull in, you know, free of charge. Uh, and, and we like to, um, you know, make it easy for interconnection, whether our customers require um, bypassing our meet me room and having the carriers pull directly into their data hall and, and, and maintaining their diversity requirements uh, that they need, or if it's a, in a traditional format to where they need interconnection and it's a, you know, a traditional type service. So, um, for us, again, we take pride on, on making that simple and making it very cost effective. Um, you know, we're, again, we don't look to monetize in, in that space. And uh, we just, you know, we like to make it easy to do business with us. Katie, Katie, this one, I'm going to send over your way. Uh, last question of our rapid round here. Uh, Stream talks about blending real estate expertise with data center acumen when a client is looking at purchasing space. What does that mean to you? Um, so what that means to me is uh, when looking at space, you know, a client comes to us, uh, we really think it's important and, and so do our clients to look at the technical piece and make sure that, you know, the wheels work the right way and the space is exactly what they want before talking about the financial side. Um, you know, there's, there are some options out there and you really just need to make sure it works from a technical side first before, um, not leading on the pricing side. Mm. So we think that's important. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Okay, yeah. well, that's the end of that, our rapid fire, but just to round out this session today, to round out our conversation, uh, let's just talk about how your answers look in practice, in you know real life. So obviously, 
Stream's able to solve for a number of problems that your customers may be facing. Katie and Chad, can you walk us through, you know, maybe an example of, of how something that stood out to you? Um, yeah, Chad, actually, I really um, think that we should touch on the, the network piece. When we are looking into developing a site, we um, really try to set up uh, the network for our clients and, and plan for those long lead times. No, that's, that's a great suggestion for sure. Um, um, yeah, so for us, you know, it's um, some of the practices or some of the fun stuff for us is being able to solve for, you know, network requirements. Um, and so, again, that's kind of a differentiator for us. Um, you know, Katie kind of mentions, you know, site selection that goes to our roots as far as who we are, um, you know, We've been in the business since 1999. Uh, we started off as, as a realty group. Um, arguably, you know, we, we were the first data center entity formed. You know, founders, you know, Paul and Rob, um, you know, started it, you know, way back then. And so that sort of carried over to some of the what we are today, not just data center, existing facilities, co-location, but also, you know, assisting in, um, with site selection. And because we're a subsidiary of a real estate group, which over 900 employees, you know, across the U.S. map, um, doing over three and a half billion in transactions annually, um, that sort of puts us in a different space in, in ability to sort of foresee and, and partner with with our prospective clients. And so, it's cool to be a part of some of these next generation requirements to where it could be hundreds and thousands of you know, uh, fiber optic uh, interconnections that are required, and then working through solving for minimum distances from maybe an existing location, but also having to solve for a maximum distance. And then some of those some of those routes or those connectivity options aren't in place today. So so we have to work and partner and care about intimately care about um, you know some of the business that's not just within our brick and mortar but outside of our facility. Because without network, you have no data center. That's right. <laughs> so Chad and Katie, that's a wrap for today. That ends today's discussion. Um, but always such a pleasure. Really always enjoy the conversations that we have and, and having you here to share your expertise. So, so thank you. Uh, and viewers, to learn more about how Stream makes procuring, deploying, and operating data center capacity a great experience, please visit streamdatacenters.com. Until next time, thanks everyone and happy networking.